Hello and welcome to Fully Charged. My name is Robert Llewellyn. This is a series about the future of energy and transport, electric cars, all kinds of cool stuff like this. And today I've just come along to see this normal town, just another town in Dubai, in Dubai, in the United Arab Emirates. And uh, I don't know, it's very nice. It's very quiet, as you can tell. Not a lot of traffic, in fact, none. In fact, it's amazing. This is the sustainable city. First of all, thank you for coming. I mean, this is uh, it's a delight to show you all of this. So this is the sustainable city and we, we regard it as our goal is to have a net zero energy development. So everything you see, first of all, the principal design elements is to reduce the energy intensity of the city. And so if you notice, as we drive through those streets, uh, the orientation of the villas, you know, these villas, they benefit from the shade. We decided to design and to orient all the villas towards the north. So all these villas are north orienting, which means they get a lot of shade and we avoid the sun. Right. And that is so important in this part of the world yeah. because otherwise your air conditioning cost is going to go up through the roof and that's not good for carbon and carbon emissions. Yeah. We also have UV reflective paint, which means you deflect a lot of sunlight and you reduce the, uh, the thermal heat gain. Right. The windows also have tremendous uh, thermal values and the roof as well. Just, it's such it's such an attractive place to live. I mean, we're now going past these beautiful ponds. Yeah, these are see, these are the water features. Right. Uh, this is actually grey water, and this comes out of our wash basin. This is water from the showers right. and the uh, the washing machine, and we actually treat it. We we separate the water which enters the city into two streams. So we have black water and grey water. Right. So what you, what you just saw is the grey water that is treated, and we treat it here in site or on site in the community and you will see that in a bit and then we pump it up through that stream and we have these storage ponds and all along this farm we're now driving through the farm which runs the length of the city yeah. uh, we uh, tap into the grey water system to irrigate the landscape and we also use the grey water to keep these pads if you can see those yes, streaks so right. those streak marks you know those pads we keep them moist with treated grey water and those are pads that we utilize to cool the biodomes right so they actually provide fresh air into the biodomes and we can enter one of those and see what's okay. inside wow. and then this is the thing that i first saw when i arrived is that all the car park yeah, space so this is, is shaded with solar panels so which is so sensible yeah which is, well two, two points first of all all the cars are assembled so we wanted to keep the cars away from the clusters which right. means when we drove through a cluster it is completely car free right that's amazing for kids I've the seen playground. Lots of kids exactly yeah. this is their space the entire yeah. cluster is their space so we have all the cars in one location and under a roof panel and uh, so we have in the city we actually have 10 megawatt peak installed let me put that into perspective wow. that's 40,000 panels right. PV panels we, so far we've installed 26,000 and of those 10 megawatt three megawatt come from the parking areas wow. so that's a lot of electricity yes. so we can produce 10 megawatt hour of of, uh, of electrical energy uh, solar energy per day wow and this feeds into the grid yeah. yeah this feeds into the grid because we are grid connected and then we tap from the grid you know we take it back yeah. to to supply energy in different sections of the city right all the services the cooling pads the farm the street lights the water features all of that is actually uh, utilizing electricity from the car parks right yeah so there is one community pool and right. this is this has always been a contentious point about sustainability but right. you know we've designed in such a way first of all this is a closed system so the water is filtered yeah and we just top it up replenish it because of evaporation during the summer right. and we have a very uh, environmentally friendly treatment system as well installed but it's also clearly very popular it's always and it's very popular. Today. I yeah. mean, uh, you know living in Dubai without a pool at least one pool is a bit yes. difficult <laughs> It's, it's become expected. Because it's such beautiful weather here today, here when we're in January, uh, you know, so I have been in this area before in the mid midsummer, and I know that it is extremely hot. So it can get, yeah, yeah exactly. So now the weather is, is beautiful. We're at 25 yeah. degrees Celsius. If you come back in four months, it's going to be 45. Yes. So yeah. then, then the story is different. Yeah. So the water that you see here, this water is streaming down. This is, this is gray water right. treated. And we have a little bit of slope. So we utilize the slope to have that movement so of, a, of, of And is it, is it cleaned as it's... Yeah, so it's it treated. Right. It is, first of all, it is treated. And then we, can, we improve the treatment. If you notice these... these um, uh, these grass, yeah. the, this is papyrus. Right. That's oh, what they had it? in Egypt, wow. right? To make paper, for example. Yeah. And those are called biofilters. So we planted those and they're actually soak, they're soaked right. down in the water. 
and they biofilter the water as right. well because they, they there's a lot of nutrient uptake yeah so they improve the water quality even more the trees that you see now the landscape here is only two years old so wow. what you see is only wow. two years old so we, we've tried to balance between the, the amenity and the utility value of a landscape right. we, do, we don't just want beautiful trees and landscapes and shrubs we also want to have trees that are going to bring something back to us so the date palms these we pollinate in the spring and then we're going to harvest we right. harvest the dates in august Wow. And then the trees scattered along the farm, we have avocado, papaya, uh, pomegranates, uh, mulberry, wow. uh, fig trees. So those are spread and they will benefit from the shade of the palm trees. Yeah. And all of that is actually irrigated with treated sewage effluent. So these pipes that you're going to see everywhere, right. this is actually treated sewage effluent. Right. Wow. And so right here on, on our left now, why well, you're going to see uh, other buggies, <coughs> is the, the grey water treatment plant. So right. it's underground. And you know, it's just next to the villa, so yeah. people are not offended by it. No, no odors whatsoever. That's the I water that we smell treat. Lovely plants, I can't smell anything else. Yeah. That's the water that we treat, right. and then we store it in the lake, and then we pump it up, and then it, it trickles down again, right. and we tap from the lake for irrigation purposes. Right. We have recycling stations Everywhere. spread throughout yeah. the city. So we have a, a ratio, we actually have uh, nine of these for every 90 villas. Um, so this is the farming that we try to have uh, for the uh, the cooler climate so right. for about six months of the year we can grow food outside and this is actually managed by the community by residents right and some of that furniture that you see scattered these benches the picnic tables yeah. and this giant yes. table the or giant chair, chair yeah. this is made of uh, of construction waste this right. is all construction waste from phase one uh, wood pallets and, uh, right. and, and the plant boxes and, and, and pla like that. Oh, exactly really? and really the planters This area is really at the entrance of the city and as part of the master plan, this is the mixed use area which is open to the public. And so here we have 15,000 square meters of space, of rental space, and this is only for rent. Right. And the idea behind it is that this is going to generate rental revenue and a portion of the rental revenue is going to pay all the service fees and the maintenance fees in the city. So we have promised all the residents in the community that they will pay zero service fees and zero maintenance fees. Wow, hang on a minute, let me get my head around that. So, so you move into the city, yeah. whether you're a tenant or a homeowner, a villa yeah. owner. So you can, you can buy one of the villas. You can buy, yeah, right. this is called freehold in right. Dubai. So right. you, yeah. can, you can buy property or you can rent, yeah. right? In both, both options, in both cases, you will not incur service fees or maintenance fees. Wow. It's zero. Wow. So when you look at concierge service or sweeping the streets or sweeping uh, the panels, or we actually dry clean the panels, the right. solar panels, all the landscaping, the water features, the grey water treatments, um, the security outside, uh, the mosque, etc. Right. All of that is provided for free. Right. I mean, for free meaning it is offset by revenues right. that come from this right. plaza. And this, this, you know, uh, this is related to ensuring that there is also economic sustainability and social sustainability. Yeah. It is not only about the energy features right. and the water features. The, the economic dimension also has to make sense. And I mean, has the general sort of public response to what you've done here been? I well, mean, it's, it's, it's been tremendous. Positive. I mean, it's right. been tremendous. Some people were, there was a lot of skepticism, right? If we go back four or five years when the planning started, most people kind of just brushed us aside. Right. Even, even you know, bankers and uh, I mean, there was little interest. We, we, did, we did draw attention, but I don't think many people believed in this concept and the right. design that was post financial crisis, global financial yeah. crisis. Things have really picked up, and now when you demonstrate what we've what we've done so far in phase one, I think it's becoming more and more obvious that this is doable, yeah. and it is not more expensive. You know, apples right, to apples, oranges to oranges. Was, oranges. Was ask so that, this yeah. is a myth, and uh, it, you know, when you design sustainably from the start, yeah. from the start, it's yeah. not an afterthought. No. An afterthought is expensive, but when you plan it right from the beginning, and you also capture the latest technology or the latest you know features from yeah. the market, uh, then it's not more expensive. Right. Right. And we've demonstrated that right. all the way down to social sustainability and economic sustainability. We've, we've brought down, just to talk about carbon, uh, on average in the world, each one of us from UK to Dubai to Lebanon to Australia, yeah. we emit on average seven metric tons of carbon dioxide per person per year. Right. Here, we've, we did our estimates because we're doing a greenhouse gas inventory of the city and we are at, a, at approximately three, 3.1 metric tons per person per year. Right. That applies for residents living in the city, wow. including commutes to outside the city. Wow. So, but and, that's, and you're talking people who've got, you know, a lot of people have quite substantially large vehicles. 
in Dubai. Unfortunately, <laughs> they're, unfortunately. Not, they're not all in super yeah, little yeah, yeah. eco. Yeah, so this is this is something we have we have our own targets as well to transform the mobility not yeah. only inside the city because that's you know we've achieved that already yes. with electric vehicles and buggies and and bicycle tracks and and jogging tracks yeah. etc. So we've we've provided that, but more importantly, we want people to begin to switch yeah. to electric vehicles. And so we've done two things so far. We've provided charging stations. Second, and that's really unique, as a developer, we are actually providing an incentive, a cash, a subsidy to villa owners who wish to uh, purchase an electric vehicle. Right. And who live in the city. Wow. So if you live in the city and you are a villa owner, you will receive up to 10,000 euros or 40,000 dirham towards your first EV purchase. Wow. That's, so that's, that's the that's incentive. incentive. So that's, yeah. that's part of your sales contract, you right. know? So whether you, you make use of it or, or not, that's, that's your choice. This so, is amazing. Yeah, so we have 11 of those. Right. And this is uh, our you know, attempt to, um, to grow food. We started with herbs. We now have, we, we spent most of last year, 2016, experimenting with different herbs and different right. temperatures. And so we've now selected 40 herbs. What you see here in this biodome, we have, uh, we have leek, we have parsley, we have mint, we have basil, chicory. Uh, spinach, spinach coriander, there. cherry tomatoes, lettuce. Because it's much cooler in here than outside, but then the fat, so the fans are blowing air, so this sucking is, air outside. Yeah, this is the beauty of, of, uh, of having a low-tech solution. This yeah. is a desert technology. Right. This has existed for more than 40 years in farms all across the Arabian desert. Right. And the system is very simple. We actually have, we call it fans and pads. Right. Fan and pads. So we have four fans blowing air out. Then you have a negative pressure inside. So passively, air That's is going to flow in. in through those. It's going to flow in right. now because you're blowing yeah. air out. Yeah. These are called pads. It's like cardboard, corrugated cardboard. Right. And then we wet them. We moist them all the time with treated gray water. So if you see them, you have these streaks of water. You can just see some drips coming exactly. down. Exactly. And pocket. if you stand in front of it, it's like an air conditioning system. Wow. Wow. So the temperature is going to drop from 45 to about 30. But the other thing is, if you were doing this 10 years ago, you would be you know, burning some form of fossil fuels in order to run the motors that drive the fans but These all fans, this electricity is all coming from solar so this is coming from the, the car parks that we saw yeah <clears throat> that's what we call the solar farm and these are just motors it doesn't yeah. take a lot it's of power very simple it's very, very simple, simple technology yeah just motors 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 yeah. so there's no air conditioning system right I think that's my argument really for the British property development sector that I want to watch this is pull your finger out guys because you because they, there's a huge amount of this technology could be used in, in the UK it's not it's not all everywhere sunshine. I mean every country has its waste, has exactly its opportunities yeah. I mean there are things you can do in the UK that we cannot do in Dubai and, and yeah. vice versa so uh, but it is about you know being future ready that's what we say we want yeah. to be future ready meaning the climate is changing things are getting more difficult yeah. Uh, and we all have this responsibility to bring down our footprints. And, uh, and so we try to personalize the, uh, the problems and the solutions here, yeah. you know, by getting everybody involved. And then presumably, in the, like in the, even in summer at night, actually, well, it gets, quite, it gets colder at night it gets than you chilly. expect, doesn't it? Yeah, it gets so, very but chilly. I mean, you could, eat, you could have a meal up here in the oh, yes. early evening when it wasn't, wasn't quite so Well, we can hot. use this space. You can use this space for about eight months. Right. But then you have four months, you don't want to be outdoors. Right, it's just too much. hot. Yeah. Uh, that would be mid June through mid September. Right. It's it's uh, you know upper mid 40s, lower to mid 40s, and then it's humid as well towards right. the end of the summer. But otherwise, you know, eight months. And so, if you notice, uh, a feature we have here is that you know we tend to associate panels, solar panels, with ah, this, you know, put it over the garage. I don't want to yeah. see it. It's not. It's it's unsightly. But we've actually incorporated it. It's part of the architecture. Because when you look over there, yeah. you wouldn't think, oh, all those roofs are solar panels. Yeah. Because you, you're flat. expecting to see something it's like nice. that. But.